is frozen. Oh. Internet connection. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and thanks for joining us, even the, from the comfort of your homes. Uh, my friends are still on some kind of a holiday. Some of them have begun school, some of them are back in school, but we can all be saved by the Lord this afternoon as we hear his word and we speak to him. Our theme this afternoon is the rejected gift, the rejected gift. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your table. We are not rejecting your gifts. The first gift you gave us was your son, Jesus Christ, and his salvation. And deliverance from all that will cause us not to love you and to serve you. Our second gift is this afternoon, the opportunity to hear your word and to be washed and cleansed by it and to grow in it. Speak to us. Let it be palatable, memorable, and practical. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue our service as we sing MHB 399. 399. Remember our theme is the rejected gift. And here the hymnist is saying that they will be thankful to God for the gift he has given. MHB 399.
Shall we continue? I'm going to read from the scriptures. Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 19, from verse 41 to 44. Let us hear the word of God. The title is, Jesus Weeps Over Jerusalem. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it and saying, Would that you, even you, had known to this day that the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will be set up, and they will set up a barricade around you, and surround you and hem you on every side, and tear you down to the ground, you and your children, and they will leave every stone unturned. And they will, leave, they will not leave one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Amen. This is the word of God. Let's say a short word of prayer before we listen to what God has to tell us. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us in living echoes of your word in clear terms. Let us appreciate so we can follow what you want us to do. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our theme this afternoon is the rejected gift. A young man was getting ready to graduate from college. For many months, he had admired a beautiful sports car in the dealer's showroom. And knowing that his father could afford it, he told him that this is what he wanted. As graduation day approached, the young man awaited signs that his father had purchased the car for him. Finally, on the day he was to graduate, his father called him into his private study, told him how proud he was and of such a fine son that he had and how much he loved him. He then handed to him a beautiful wrapped gift box. Curious, but, whatever disp- but somewhat disappointed, the young man opened the box and found a lovely leather-bound Bible with his name embossed in it in gold. He was so angry. So he raised his voice to his father and said, With all your money, with all that you have, you give me a Bible, rather than the sports car I asked for. He then stormed out of the house, leaving the Bible behind. Many years passed, and a young man was very successful in business. And then he returned. He had a beautiful home and wonderful family, but realized that he had, when he thought about his father, he was very old now. He then decided that perhaps it would be good to go and see him because he had not seen him since the graduation day. However, before he could make arrangements to go, he received a phone call from a funeral home director telling him that his father had passed away and had willed all his possessions to him. He was told that, the need, that he needed to go home quickly to take charge of things. When the son arrived at his father's house, sadness and regret filled his heart he began to search through his father's important documents and saw the bible his father had given him for his graduation the bible looked new just as it was many years ago when it had been given to him with tears in his eyes he opened the bible and began to turn through the pages his father had clearly underlined the verse which is matthew 7 11 and that reads if ye being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father, who is in heaven, give to those who ask him? As the son read through those words, a car key dropped from the back of the Bible. It had a tag on it with a car dealer's name. The same dealer who had the sports car that he wanted so badly for his college education, college graduation. On the tag and on the date of his graduation, and the words that were written bold and large paid in full many times during our lifetime we miss god's blessings because we are not they are not packaged the way we expect and this is a true story that happened that this young man having come through graduation had asked his father for a wonderful gift and his father was willing but somehow, he had packaged it very differently from what he had expected. And hence, he thought, no, 
you have not given me what I really wished for. It's also a way in which the Israelites, they were looking for a Messiah, and they were looking for peace, they were looking for redemption. Jesus comes, and he is the answer, a solution to their problem. But they didn't see it, because Jesus was not wrapped in the way they were expecting. Somebody coming on a Trojan horse with spear and shield and with all uh, troops following him so that he would go and conquer and throw away all the, the, the Jews. You know that we also, in the same way, sometimes expect God to answer our questions or answers in a particular one way. But God is as varied as the earth. Even we say, all the hands, all the fingers are not equal. How much more? God who knows all the different hands that there are. Secondly, even on our hands, ten fingers and on our feet, none of those prints are ever the same. There are no duplicates of those fingerprints. So God takes the time to meet everyone who needs, whose needs that, that, uh, from, 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 the, from the word. Everyone whose needs must be met. Everyone whose needs must be met, God himself would really, specifically to you, provide a solution that brings the answer you have been looking for to meet the need that you have. We are all unique. We are all different. There's none like the other person. There's no one, none of us all the same. But God in his wisdom will bring us a solution to to what we are supposed to be. Jesus therefore wept over Jerusalem. Similarly, like they, they, uh, they had rejected the answer that he had brought. They had prayed for peace, but when he, the answer had arrived, they rejected it, reckoning it as not as they had expected. Therefore, they still suffer. They still suffer. They still suffer. You and me, how many times have we also rejected God's answer to our prayers? Because they were not packaged the way we expected. They were not presented in the form we expected. They didn't even come at the time we expected. They didn't come with all the pomp and pageantry that we were expecting. But God in his wisdom decides that he will bring us a solution wrapped in the way he wants, wrapped in the way he decides, wrapped in the way that makes sense to him, wrapped so that it will bring joy to, 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 to us. So, no, don't despair. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Sometimes we do it because we are looking at other people's solution. We are looking at something that he has provided for somebody. He answered Mrs. X or Mr. Y, uh, John or Mary's un uh, 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 um, solution this way. And it was so nice, so full of fun. So, he has to answer mine that way. Please, God does not. God does not answer all our questions and answers the way we want. He puts it in the way he likes. In the way he likes. Sometimes, too, our own responses come out of greed. Out of greed. The way we want to respond to, to, to want the answers to come. We want it the way that would, it's more of greed. God thinks that we may not need it the way and the volume and value that we are, it seems that we need a specific measure, but we think that no, we want to, to, to get a response in the way we want. Before they were a week old, the eagles were fighting over food. Neither was strong enough to hold his head for more than a few seconds. So the pair looked like first balls with blubber heads attached. But whenever the parents brought food to the nest, the bigger eaglets was quick to peek down his brother, to peck down his brother, to keep him from getting a single bite. His aggression would have been understandable if the food was scarce or if the parents couldn't be trusted to supply what he needed. But nothing could be further than from the truth. The eaglets were being fed fish, many times bigger than the size they could eat. There was enough for both of them. The greedy eaglet reminds me of our own foolishness when we try to get food for ourselves. Sometimes that belongs to someone else. 
you want to get something for yourself that actually belongs someone else somebody's girlfriend somebody's wife somebody's husband somebody's um, 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 friend please conflicts erupt because we want something that god has given to a friend a colleague a relative or a neighbor instead of asking for what we need knowing that god has made us unique and he will meet at at the point of our need we try to get what is given to someone else because for us it is nicer it is better it is lovelier but what you need is what is most important somebody has said that life is full of exams and life is a big exam itself but people are answering the wrong questions they are asking they are answering the other person's question so god has something good for each of us we don't need what belongs to anyone else and we certainly never need to harm anybody else to get what we need so god will give you what you need don't reject the gift your gift of a talent the gift of the word the gift of salvation the gift of um, school or a relationship it is yours don't look over your shoulder the green, the pasture is not always green on the other side no it is yours he has tailor made it for you it is bespoke for your for your for your needs and your fitting i pray that you'll be content with it be content the secret of contentment is to let god supply so that when he brings that gift you would accept don't just do your part and put god first and he um, would also bring his word and let his word be the reliable gift that he gives you a direction to meet what you need our needs can never exhaust god's supply so don't think that because he has given x you will not get yours is on the way the timing will be right the place will be right the pomp and pageantry with it would also be fitting and glorious trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit do not reject any gift god gives amen let us pray cast your mind has god not brought you a gift that you have rejected in any way it could be healing he asked you to see a certain doctor or somebody and then you didn't he asked you um, um, to make friends with somebody he asked you to take a job he asked you to go and preach his word in a certain place he asked you to go and look for some people and feed them or clothe them it's a, an opportunity a gift he gave you and because it wasn't like john's or mary's you thought it wasn't god speak to him about it and let him give you another chance he does our heavenly father we pray you have brought us many gifts many times from our infancy all the way till now we pray O lord that whatever you have given us that we have rejected that we have put down like that graduate expecting you to come in a certain way wrapped in a certain um, 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 methodology or a certain wrapper we pray that you forgive us and cleanse us from all this rejection cause us to accept these gifts and go back to them for in it lies our salvation and our redemption and your name will be glorified whatever it is whether it's work exam results or job or career or relationship or church or even a calling on our lives may we not resist you let us know that you are a gift you have given us the best in jesus name amen we want to pray also lord for um, our nation this is our nation one nation we have it is ghana it is ghana it is ghana it is peaceful we have elections coming up we have people who are contesting let god give show us the gift he has given us so we will not reject that gift that gift he has specially wrapped he has prepared he has brought up in a certain way it may not look the way we want but it is god's gift let us know and he will speak to us clearly that this is his gift this is his gift if he does and we accept there will be peace there will be peace there will be peace there will be peace so we pray lord that you would receive our, our opportunity that we are going to have to elect the next government we want to pray in the name of jesus that you will speak to everyone in the nation cause us to know 
what gift in these contests you are giving us let us make the choice by receiving whoever you are leading us to 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 vote for and let the results be clear so that our peace will continue let the results be clear so we will not have any questions whatsoever let the results be clear so that we will not have the, the, the position where rejection will cause mayhem and will cause trouble let us have a clarity in our minds so when we go and vote it would be fulfilled the way you want it that no one no one will lift a hand or a finger in a stone or any armor to 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 bring trouble we pray for peace we pray that your 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 word will continue to spread and people will come and know you as lord and savior then we will obey and know the gifts you send us and it will bring us progress greed will be out and disappointment will be shelved but your glorious gift will reign thank you in Jesus' name on sunday our church is going to have a meeting um special general meeting or an extraordinary annual general meeting is to make good decisions about council and to go on um, in the COVID, we have had to be challenged but god in his wisdom gave us some some alternative to be able to run now we must make decisions so let us pray that he will be present he will give us direction there will be right decisions to be made and accepted and then we'll carry on let us pray father in your wisdom you've always provided leadership always now it's time to think about leadership again the way it must be done in this COVID era and to progress when we meet on sunday we invite you to be present speak to us from now so we'll be clear in our minds how it's going to be we we'll need people to come to church so the numbers will be filling and fulfilling and then when they come to church we'll have that wonderful one um, and joint service we've been wishing for all these years we'll observe all the protocols in the COVID era we would observe everything that is acceptable and right before you and then you will help us make the decisions in the meeting we'll speak amicably we'll speak respectfully we'll speak professionally we'll speak spiritually we'll speak your oracles that your name will be established in a Crary church for the progress of your congregation in your church thank you we ask all of this through christ our lord amen we bring our service to a close as we sing Methodist hymn 538. It's a very popular hymn that tells us that we should bring all our petitions to God. And if we understand that we must not reject God's gift and must know it, then 538 will cause us to, to, to know what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. It's all because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. We don't know what gifts he has sent and we can't choose. Five, three, eight.
Let's conclude our service as we pray and receive the benediction. Lord, we are travelers on this highway. We are pilgrims. And on it, there are many decisions we come to. We need your unction, your blessing, to be able to make the right choices. And when you have brought the, the gifts away, we'll receive them. Lord, help us so that you can meet those needs of ours. And we'll reject none through Christ our Lord. Amen. The benediction. Unto him who is able to keep you from falling, a dear companion, a faithful friend, the Lord Jesus, I commit to you. I bless you and say that may he open your eyes to see the gifts that he sends, that you make the right choices every day, every time. And may he bless a union of his and yours that you shall have no end to it. You will never depart from it. And with other saints, you will grant, he will grant you peace and you would lead the life that is worthy of his calling, both now and always. Amen.